An in your face movie review. Apologies if I seem a little mentally unhinged, but I've just watched the new Joker movie. Joker Folly a Deer, which is French for, I think, two people entwined by mental illness or mental delusion. So the movie's obviously had quite an effect on me, dealing as it does with uh, the main character who pretty much has a split personality. What was that? Relax, it's just me, your other personality. Or should I say it's you? Yes, the Joker movie. So it seems like people are losing their minds over this movie, which is appropriate since its central protagonist, Arthur Fleck, uh, someone downtrodden, oppressed by society, which was evident in the previous movie, adopts a new personality, the Joker personality, which uh, thrives on chaos to really uh, lift him up from his low station in life. And there was something quite cathartic about that in the first movie. But this movie, the sequel, does not lean into all the things that people loved about the first movie. Oh, before I continue, a disclaimer. I'm not going to tell you if the movie was good or bad. I'm not really a fan of movie reviews for a simple reason. Reviewing a movie without actually seeing it for yourself, it seems redundant. It's like describing the components of an automobile and then making a decision on the description of the components and then deciding based on that description if you want to drive the car for yourself. You're really going to only form an opinion by taking the car for a test drive. So, I mean, there's many YouTubers out there who review movies and they'll do a much better job than I will. So if you're after a rating out of five or number of stars for the Joker movie, um, I'd switch across to another YouTube clip now and save yourself the grief. Or if you're watching this on TikTok or Instagram, swipe across to another reel or a video. The dogs are clearly uh, unhappy with my laissez-faire attitude to movie reviewing. Sorry, dogs. Yeah, so the movie uh, Joker, Folly a Deer, uh, it's outraged a lot of people because it's actually the polar opposite of the first movie, which, you know, not going to lie, the first movie was very cathartic. There was something electrifying about seeing Arthur Fleck, as played by Joaquin Phoenix, play the lowliest of the low person forgotten by society, someone clearly with mental illness who finds his power by basically becoming an agent of chaos and thus inspiring like-minded people who also feel uh, put upon by society. They felt like they've missed out and he really becomes an uplifting figure. For all the other characters in the first movie, oh, except the five or six people that he murders in the first movie. So I imagine it was quite disappointing for fans of the first movie to sit down and as a real unspooled, um, the opening of the movie, I'm not going to spoil this movie, see it for yourself. I'm not going to describe 
what I liked or disliked. I'm just going to give you uh, the feelings that elicited in me. And that's really, I don't expect much. In 2024, I just want to feel something, whether that's uh, buying a meal in a restaurant or a cafe. I want something to be exceptional about it. If I choose a streaming show on Netflix or one of the other platforms, uh, more on that later about Netflix. I want to feel something. I, I'm big on aesthetics and artistry. So if I sense a filmmaker, an artist, a chef, a writer, whoever it may be, if I sense that they are imbuing their creation with care and thought, even if the end product is something uh, hated by the masses, which seems to be the case with Folie Deer, I'm happy because I want to feel something because I rarely, uh, popular culture in the mid 2020s is a sterile antiseptic affair. So if I can feel something, that's a big tick for me. And yes, Folie Deer made me feel something. From the opening, which was uh, quite interesting. It was like an animated cartoon. The movie opens not live action, even though it's a live action movie. It opens with an animated sequence in, in the style of the old Bugs Bunny Warner Brothers cartoons. And if you pay attention to those two, maybe two and a half minutes of animation, you can basically divine the whole plot of the movie. You know what is going to happen. Um, but maybe the general public, that cartoon was just a stupid diversion at the start. But having seen the movie and having reflecting on the opening, the movie basically puts all its cards on the table. Wait, who's filming this? You are. I mean, I am. Okay, where was I? Yes, so back to the first movie, the first Joker movie, uh, Arthur Fleck as the Joker murders five, we actually find out it's actually six people in this movie. His, okay, this is a spoiler, I said no spoilers. So switch off now if you don't want this spoil. This is a mild spoiler. His body count in this movie is zero. Arthur Fleck as the Joker doesn't kill anyone. In fact, he is even more disempowered in this movie. And I think this is what people are objecting to because they perceived a character arc in the previous movie, even though he was obviously mentally ill, he has that alternate personality that he leans on. But this movie really is mainly a courtroom drama. But what elevated it for me and what made me feel something is there is another character in the movie played by Lady Gaga, who is basically a super fan and she is obsessed with the persona of the Joker. Uh, with Arthur, not so much. So you can probably imagine where that's going to go. But She's a singer, a professional musician. The movie is actually a musical, so I think that's another reason why people are stumbling with this, because the characters, including Arthur, and hats off to Waheen Phoenix for uh, not only delivering a compelling performance, but actually having the audacity to sing alongside Lady Gaga because he's obviously not a professional singer, she is. But it's those moments where they break out, break into song first in the real world. Those sequences then like transition into what is obviously dream sequences or delusions where the songs 
uh, Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix, or as their characters Arthur Flex and Lee Quinn, they become big, old style, classic uh, Hollywood musical numbers. And you can tell that's where all the money was spent. All the money is up on the screen for those musical numbers. Oh, I've uh, actually attracted an audience my Joker review. Okay, what was I saying? Just trying to find my bearings again. Oh yeah, I know. Lady Gaga. Yes, great singer. Oh, this actually reminds me. She was in a mo another movie a couple of years ago. Uh, what was it? It was about it was about the Gucci family, so it was set in the fashion world. She played a real life character that married into the Gucci family. It wasn't a singing role. She had to just re rely solely on her acting chops. Uh, House of Gucci, that was the movie. That was another poorly reviewed movie containing, starring Lady Gaga. She did a brilliant job, even not falling back on her singing skill. Brilliant actor, brilliant actor in the Joker movie. Uh, brilliant singer too. Um, seems like a bit of an injustice. She was only paid $12 million to star in the Joker movie. And the director, Todd Phillips, and the star, Joaquin Phoenix, were both paid $20 million a piece. I mean, good for them. Uh, you get what you negotiate, but um, Wahine can't sing. I mean, surely they could have, uh, surely they could have sent a few more million Lady Gaga's way, uh, since she really, uh, she's the one carrying the musical numbers. Anyway, see the movie, don't see the movie. I mean, it's. It's telling that the first movie was even a success because it's about a guy who becomes a psychotic clown and that's his, that's his way of uh, like winning, transcending society. I mean, where are you going to go with that story? It, it kind of made sense the way they went in the sequel. In fact, maybe the sequel was an attempt to try and uh, put the genie back into the bottle because the energy surrounding that character of the Joker, it, it's very chaotic while it's appealing. It is destructive. There's nothing, there's nothing upbuilding about it. I mean, do, do we really want a figure like the Joker to be an aspirational figure? I mean, that's why Batman exists, doesn't he? I mean, he doesn't exist in this Joker movie, but he, he's there to counter that force. So. I mean, maybe the first movie is more resonant with our times because, you know, we do live in chaotic times. We see clownish figures on the world stage strutting around, um, causing problems, in, inspiring people to just say, oh, what the hell, let's burn it all down. So perhaps this... Uh, musical version of the Joker, which was really all about justice and facing up to what, what you've done. Um, maybe that's not what people in the world want. Maybe uh, even people who were opposed to the narrative thrust of the first movie, maybe secretly deep down, they were hoping for more chaos, more carnage. Uh, you know, courtesy of uh, Arthur Flex, other, other persona. But I did feel something and it had some mighty good tunes. Oh, I just remembered an addendum to my review, a postscript if you like. I was going to reference Netflix again. Um, being someone primarily interested in aesthetics and artistry, one thing I can't stand is what I call uh, the cheapening of cinema or 
Let's use another term, a made up term, the Netflixification of cinema. Netflix, obviously wildly successful streaming platform, but to gain subscribers, they pump out so much content and a lot of it looks like shit. I mean, it's obvious to anyone with a passing interest in cinema, the history of cinema, you know, the artistry of great directors, great actors, great writers, everything on Netflix looks cheap. It has a cheap plastic Netflix sheen. When I watch something on Netflix, I don't feel like I'm watching a movie at all. I just feel like I'm watching product made for a technology platform. So, back to Joker Folly Adair, it's pleasing to me watching a movie like that, even though it seems to be universally reviled and hated, it is pleasing to me to see the artistry up on the screen, the lighting, the shot design, the set design, the blocking of the actors, the acting, the music. I mean, even if you hate the movie, you can't tell me with a straight face that it is made by unprofessionals. It's not. It's clearly made by people who love cinema. And for that, I'm grateful.